Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video, we're back on the 32. We're gonna finish the firewall and start doing body work on this chassis. So we were actually supposed to be working on Shannon's Comet today, but she ended up with a lot of work on her plate. So she's doing her real work stuff, and I guess I'll have to work on the 32 instead. Uh, to start this video, we're gonna fix up the firewall feet on here, both sides. The, there's supposed to be three bolts that hold this together, and there's only one, well, one and a half. I'll show you what's going on here. So there is supposed to be one, two, three bolts for the little foot stand on this firewall here. This one is broken, this one's completely missing, and this one is completely missing. So to start this video off, we're going to fabricate some new ones. So I've kind of already got started on the passenger side here. I just took a piece of construction paper here, slid it in there and kind of traced what I'm assuming it should look like. I don't have any reference on this other than I looked at a picture on the internet. But, I mean, I don't know how concourse exact this has to be anyways. I just want three bolts to hold each side down again. So we're gonna cut this out now. I marked the hole on the other side here. This is, from what I can tell when I measured it, even as pitted as it is, it appears to be 14 gauge. So I've got some 14 gauge scraps. We'll cut this out with some scissors, lay it on the piece of scrap 14 gauge and trace it out then cut it. All right, let's see how this fits. Should slide in about like that. Put a bolt in there to line it up. And yeah, that's close enough, I think. We can weld that up. And then this final edge, we'll probably just hit it once with the grinder to even it out and make it look straight once this is all welded in. Okay, I'm just gonna use some MIG and tack it in there. You could TIG it if you wanted. I was originally gonna TIG it, but the TIG is a little awkward in there and I don't care that much. This'll be fine. It'll work just fine. All right, maybe one more. One more there. And then do I wanna weld this on the car or do I wanna weld it on the bench? Might as well, might as well weld it up on the car for now, because it's already on the car. Okay, one down. Let's do this piece now, and then we'll move on to the other side. I'm just gonna bend this in the vise because this is 14 gauge and my 
brake is only rated for 16 gauge and it's a pretty light piece, so. Okay, let's see how this fits in there. Not bad, it's a little bit weird here, but I think I can live with it. Probably tack it here, 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 and then just fold this over a little bit, and I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna put a bolt in there to hold it in place, and then we'll give it a couple tacks, just like the other side. Okay, I think we'll give that a little tappa tappa tappa. Let's get this stuff out of the way. A tappa tappa tappa. A tappa tappa followed by a tacka tacka. Got a little big on the gap there, but that's okay. Because we can fill it with Miller. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this all up now. So before I go over to the other side, We'll grind this side and then it's completely done. That bolt doesn't want to come out of there very happy anymore. You might have to take the drill and just ream the hole a little bit. But yeah, we'll grind this all up. Pretty much do it the same as we did the firewall. We're gonna use the grinding stone to knock down the majority of it and then finish it off with the disc once I get this bolt out. Okay, well I'm happy with that. So now we just gotta do the same thing on that side. And I think that's it for the firewall. Exciting. Well, I went ahead and did this side without you guys. 
I'm sorry if you guys wanted to see it, but I figured because it's literally the exact same as that side, you know, you guys didn't need to see it twice. If you did want to see it, well, you can just go back a little bit and watch that side twice because that's all this side was. Now the firewall is done. All the metal work's done on it. I ground down a couple welds from the motor mounts on the chassis. I think we're ready for the part that I've been putting off, which is the body work and paint side. The reason I've been putting it off is because I hate dust. I really enjoy doing body work. In fact, when that's when I was 16, I started my auto body apprenticeship. And for a good portion of my career, that's mostly what I focused on was paint and body. But I had a designated place to do that. Here we've got finished cars in the shop. We've got, you know, the wall of old junky speed equipment. <laughs> and I don't want to get that stuff covered in body filler, dust, primer, dust, overspray. So I've kind of been putting it off, but it's a nice sunny day out right now. So I think we can get away with moving this thing outside and doing some body work outside. I'll put a jacket on if I have to. It's not quite as warm as it was when we were at the Grand National Roadster Show last weekend, but with a jacket, we'll be fine. So now the question that you guys have all been asking, what did I decide for the body of paint on this? The last video where we worked on this, I was talking about, do we just brush paint it black? Do we actually body work it and make it really nice and pretty? And you guys gave me all sorts of awesome comments on what you would do. Some of them were not quite what I had in mind. Some of them were spot on what I had in mind. So thanks for all your guys' opinions and input. Here's what I've decided to do. So we just spent the whole weekend walking around looking at some of the most beautiful cars out there. There was a 32 Ford sedan, a red one with an Olds engine in it that really caught my eye. It was very similar to what I've always kind of had in mind with this. And the chassis on that, I have no idea what it looked like because you couldn't see it. <laughs> so I have decided that we're going to body work the outside of the frame rails, mainly to get rid of some of these pits. Uh, remember where we spliced the frame in here? I just want to give that a skim coat and smooth it out. I'm not going to get carried away. I'm not going to block sand any of this. I'm probably just going to skim it and then just sand it with a DA. That'll be good enough because you'll never see it. Uh, Jim at Rondex Paint and Body is mixing me up some, I think Emron is the brand name of it. It's a good industrial semi-gloss black. And that's what we'll spray that in. Probably won't be in this video because it's not ready yet, but we can do some body work and get it ready for that. Uh, last weekend, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Uh, I was talking with my friend Bruce, who's building a three window right now. And he gave me the best idea ever. And when we were at the Kennedy Brothers shop last weekend at the Roadster Show, they had a 32 chassis in there that had the exact same thing done. So the whole frame, semi-gloss black. But the little reveal, because this part of the frame you see, I know a lot of people were saying, you'll never see the frame, just paint it black. Well, this you do see. This is where the fender comes down. And this is essentially like, on a Model A, this would be the splash pan, but on 32s, they didn't use a splash pan. Your body ends here and your running board bolts up here. And this is all visible. So this is all gonna be semi-gloss black. And then this reveal right here is gonna get painted body color. Uh, the firewall, I'm gonna stick with my original plan that I've always had. I wanna do it Wimbledon white, because I really like white firewalls, especially for a late 50s, early 60s style build like I'm doing with this. So that's my plan. Hopefully you guys like it. If you don't like it, nothing I can do about that, but I like it. So we're gonna move some cars now. I think I'm gonna switch the Roadster with this and that way I can roll this thing outside, work on it for today. At the end of the day, I can just roll it back in and it can sit there until the next time I work on it. But we'll do that next. Musical cars. Let's 
I know I said I was going to do this outside, but until we get to the dusty part, I'm going to work inside just to keep everything nice and warm, mainly myself. I've got some 40 grit on here, and we're going to use this to rough up the areas where we're going to put some body filler. Areas like right here. I just took this carriage bolt out just to make this a little bit easier so that we don't have to go around it. So we're going to do some body filler here. Same spot on the other side. Uh, we might get into a little bit right here. And then this whole area up here. Here's the pitting that I was talking about. That's what I want to get rid of. So if we rough that area up with 40 grit, then we'll skim coat that, those little sections, roll it outside, sand them, roll it back inside reapply if we have to, and so on and so forth. We've got our bodywork station all set up here. We're going to use some Evercoat Rage Gold body filler. I really like that stuff. We got some gloves to keep our fingers clean. Got a little cleanup station here. And this is just a piece of sheet metal that I use as a Bondo board and the old spatula. Some people like to use plastic ones. I've always preferred these ones. So we're going to mix some fill her up and do our first pass. Okay, we're gonna start by buttoning my shirt up so I don't get my new shirt dirty, covered with body filler, because Pierre will probably never give me another shirt again if I ruin this one the first day. Okay, put some gloves on. Oh, we need a screwdriver to pop that guy open. Actually, you might be able to get it with this. No. Screwdriver. Okay. We got a screwdriver. Oh, yeah. There's the stuff. Ooh. Get a, get a whiff of that. It's probably a weird thing to say, but I've always really liked the smell of body filler. Okay, that should be enough there. For now, we can always go back and mix more. The ratio on this stuff depends completely on where you live. Different temperatures, different humidities. Oh man, that's a little, little runny. Okay, let's mix this up. You wanna mix it up nice and thorough. It'll kind of turn a green color, or at least this particular stuff does. Simple kindergarten science, you mix blue and yellow and you get green. But what you're looking for is you don't want any like blue or yellow streaks in there because that means it's not mixed thorough. I 
think we're pretty good. Okay, let's go over to the car and start applying. Okay, we're gonna focus on filling the heavy spots first, and then we'll kind of blend it out. Also, when you're applying body filler, Try not to leave any hard edges, like these edges here, that's just gonna be hard to sand. So once we get her all covered, we'll go back and kinda clean that up. Not that we're going to have hard to sand stuff because we're just going to DA this. We're not actually blocking it. Same with little spots like that. You want to make sure that's filled. Otherwise, that's just going to cause you problems later. Okay, that's probably... Oh, we got to get the bottom side. That's probably good. We can move on. Okay, we're gonna need a little more, but we've gotta start on there. Before we do that though, we're gonna clean up our Bondo board here, just so that this stuff doesn't, like if we go and mix new stuff up now, and then uh, the little bit that's on here, when it starts to kick off, it's just gonna make a mess. So we'll clean up and then start fresh. This is just a little bit of paint thinner. Gun wash works really good, but I don't have gun wash, so this is just reducer. So just a little bit of that and an old scotch bright. Give it a wipe and that's good to go again. Now we're ready to mix up another batch. So we got our first coat down on everything. We're gonna roll this thing outside now and start sanding. So I realized I said I was gonna just buzz this down with the DA, but here we are with the longboard now. So <laughs> that's how projects snowball. This is, yeah, this is nice. It's tacky right now, which is, I don't, and it might be a little bit too fresh to start, but if you weren't using an airboard, this is where you would come in with an old piece of 40 grit and just knock off the high spots. Well, it's, when it's a little bit fresh or tacky like this, you can really, get all these big chunks down fast. But with the airboard, I don't know if we need to do that because it works really fast. So I think we're okay. I think we can start hitting this now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, how the big chunks just come right off. Okay, I'm gonna switch to time lapse and start sanding. Probably should have a respirator on right now. I know all the 
safety people are going to be like, get your respirator on. But I'm only, the, the, there's a slight breeze going this way. So I'm going to stand on this side. And as the dust starts forming, it's going to blow the dust away. It'll be fine. Trust me. We're back inside now. We sanded our first coat and we're ready to apply a second coat. So on here, notice how we broke through to bare metal right here, but it's still rough here. The reason I did not keep sanding to sand this out is because we've hit bare metal here, this is the highest spot. So this is like the plane. If we kept sanding this, it's just gonna start creating a low spot all the way around here because the metal won't sand anymore, but the body filler will still sand. So when you break through to shiny spots like that, next to that, just stop. Stop, and that's when you gotta give it another coat. So we're gonna do basically the same thing all the way around, and then we'll roll it outside and hit it one more time. So with each coat that you put on, it should be getting smoother and smoother. Remember when I said to watch for those hard edges? Yeah, oh, I ignored my own advice there. You can see where the hole is. When we sand this, we're gonna lose the hole, but it doesn't matter because we can just go on the inside and drill our hole back out. Same with this hole here. That one's still there, but yeah, I'm not concerned about the holes at all right now we can put the holes back in afterwards. Same with all this stuff like that. You can just take your scraper and, well, usually they scrape off. That one's stubborn. Oh, there we go. We're back inside after round two of sanding. So this is what I would pretty much consider to be finished. We roughed it out with 80, or uh, sorry, 40 grit, and then finished it off by hand with 80 grit. We actually finished all of this by hand because my trusty airboard that I have had for over 20 years, I bought this over 20 years ago off of some poor guy that was down on his luck, bought it out of a shopping cart in a back alley in Northern Edmonton 20 years ago. So it was probably stolen, and I didn't realize at the time that I was buying stolen tools, which I definitely wouldn't do now. You never buy somebody's stolen tools. That's not cool. But I didn't know any different at the time, and uh, I've had it for, yeah, ever since then, 20 years now, and it finally died. So I finished all of this by hand with just a Durablock and this little Princess Auto guy. This has 40, this has 80. So it's not quite done yet. We still got a couple little spots in here that we got it hit, maybe with some putty. And I wanna flip it upside down and do the bottoms. I did the bottom as best I could this way, but it would make it a lot nicer with it upside down. So unfortunately, we don't have time anymore in this video to keep going. Uh, Shannon and I have a dinner party that we gotta go to in an hour or so. so. Ran out of time. I was hoping to get this at least in slick sand today, but by having to do it all by hand, that took quite a bit longer than I was anticipating. Kept me warm though. I didn't need a jacket. So slick sand is like a, they call it a polyester surfacer, but what it really is is like spray on body filler and it will fill all our sanding scratches, 
There's a little bit of grinder marks there, it'll fill. And I'm hoping that it's gonna fill all our minor pits. There's pits in here, they're not as bad as these, but they're still there, so I'm pretty confident that they will fill with that. If not, we might have to do it twice. Or skim it with some putty, which is just like body filler, but not as heavy duty. So, but we'll do that in another video. Uh, anyways, for this video, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I just want to give a, say a quick thanks to Piero for the car that ate my brain shirt. He gave me this when we were hanging out at the Roadster show last weekend, and I did not get any body filler on it today, which is great. If you want to get one of these shirts, go check out Mad Fabricator Society. Great YouTube channel. They, he started years ago, like early 2000s, he started making content like this. So super cool guy. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to another YouTube channel, Rides in Motion, which is John and his son Jackson Foxley. They are from the Vancouver area, so not quite totally local to here, but pretty close. They're only a short ferry ride away over in Vancouver, BC, but they build really cool traditional cars, father-son team. And yeah, they uh, John's son Jackson's got a pretty cool little YouTube channel, so go check that out. Uh, if you want to support this channel and get an LG Speed and Custom shirt or stickers or whatever, go check out lgspeedcustom.com and pick yourself up some merch. Anything that you guys buy is super appreciated and all the money goes back into our projects here. So thanks everybody for the support. And last but not least, thanks to the Switchblade Valentines. All the music in this video was done by Local Victoria, Rockabilly, Psychabilly Band, the Switchblade Valentine. So go check them out on Bandcamp. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. See you later.